So here, this first surface horizon that we have, the, the dark layer that we have from 0 to 30 centimeters, is an AH horizon. And what makes this an AH horizon is the darker color that we see associated with it. So that's indicating that we've got the, the uh, significant input of humic materials or organic material. And so you can actually see when you look at this that we have quite a bit of roots going all the way down through this layer. That's imparting a lot of the color. Same kind of concept as we learned about when we were talking about the Chernozemic uh, the Chernozemic order. Uh, within this particular layer then, uh, we've, because we've got a lot of organic material associated with it, we also see that it's got quite a nice uh, granular structure associated with it. So if we look at this, the way it just sort of nicely breaks up into soft granules, and so this is a, a very uh, very productive soil, good for, for, uh, for growth in terms of nutrient retention and water retention as well between the the bit of clay that's present here and the organic material that's present the significant organic material that's present within it it's it makes it uh, very favorable for for vegetative growth so in terms of the nice dark color that we see here if we were to describe this using the Munsell color chart we would use the 10YR color chart and it would classify as a, basically a nice black soil, actually, even though we're in the dark brown soil zone here. And so it would probably classify out as a 10YR, so that's the sheet that we're looking at, and then uh, 2 over 1, possibly even uh, 3 over 1 as it dries out here a little bit. Uh, so we would classify this as, as uh, or describe the color in, in this category here. As we move down into the next horizon, we would call this, uh, it's still an, it considered an A horizon, but we would call it an AE horizon. And the E refers to eluviation, so eluviation with an E as opposed to illuviation with an I. And the way I remember eluviation, uh, of what it means, basically E also stands for exit. So we've got material exiting or leaving this particular horizon, and so that's why it's referred to as an AE horizon. It's having it, some of the clay, the original clay materials uh, and organic material as well has been wa leached out through downward water movement through this, through this profile. So we're in the lowest position in this particular landscape. Water is moving down through the soil profile. And so we've got a lot of continual organic matter inputs near the surface. But below that, we're seeing material being removed out of this AE horizon. So it's an eluvial horizon. And I remember that as the E being uh, representing stuff that things have exited that particular horizon. And so if we take a, a look at this, take a closer look at it. In terms of the, the material itself, we can see that it is quite a bit lighter than the material above it. And it's an AE horizon in part because of the color, in part because of the structure. So, and also the G designation comes from the presence of these uh, reddish streaks here, which is where we're, those iron oxides that we were talking about. So when iron oxides are moving through the profile in their reduced form, they uh, re-oxidize as the soil dries out, forming these sort of rusty spots here. And so these reddish marks are what makes this a, a glade horizon. So within this then, we also see uh, some a bit of structural, the structure of this particular horizon is actually uh, breaking along horizontal lines here. And so we've got uh, what we would refer to as a bit of a weak platy structure. It's not as pronounced as it might be in an actual luvisolic soil within the forest, but the natural tendency is for the, the structural units to break along uh, the horizontal relative to where it was in the soil pit originally. So in terms of the color here, so as opposed to the horizon above, the, the AH horizon, which was right down here, we can see that the, it's got quite a bit uh, brighter value relative to that horizon. So we're moving all the way up here probably to uh, still on the 10YR page, but probably more on the order of 10YR, say, uh, 5 over 1 or 5 over 2 in this area here. So quite a bit uh, lighter in terms of both the, the value and redder in terms of the overall chroma. So those are our two A horizons, the AH and the AEG. And below that then, whenever we have an AE horizon, we typically also have, um, or very often anyway, we would have underneath that a BT horizon. 
So the T uh, refers to a, a change. I remember this as a change in texture, a, a sharp contrast in terms of the texture, because it has significantly more clay in it than the horizon above it, because the clay has been moved down through downward water movement through the profile. So we've got a BT horizon below there where the, the T refers to that increase in clay. The clay, the increase in clay content is what's giving us the, the, the more readily observed structure down here in, in the bottom. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, a reddish color to it because of the, both because of, of the oxidized, oxidization of the, the minerals that are present within it, but also more specifically, we've got quite a bit more mottling within this particular horizon. So I'm just going to grab a, a quick sample here. <coughs> 